Federation Council wishes to advise members of the public gallery that meetings will be recorded and available after each meeting on Council's website. All care will be taken to maintain the privacy of those in attendance. However, as a visitor in the public gallery, your presence may be recorded. By remaining in the public gallery, it is assumed your consent is given in the event your image is broadcast. This includes any filming by television cameras if attendance is approved by general manager or mayor. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians from the land on which we are meeting today, the Bangarang people, and acknowledge the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who now reside in this area. I extend that respect to Elders past president of the Bangarang Nations. And Wiradjuri, given you up here. And Wiradjuri, given we're down. You're in a, the old run, sorry. Thank you. I'll now call for apologies and applications for leave of absence by councillors. I uh, don't have any, uh, Mr Mayor, and I think looking around the screens, everyone's been able to log on uh, virtually, which is great. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, 3.1, um, confirmation of minutes. Would someone like to confirm the minutes uh, uh, the, of the ordinary meeting held on 20th of July 2021? So done. Moved by Councillor Law, seconded by Councillor Kennedy. All in favour? Locked out. Aye. Against? Yes, you Carry. Aye. Disposes of interest. Thanks, Mr Mayor. I do have one item being uh, from Councillor Kennedy. A significant pecuniary <coughs> interest in report. In, sorry, in report 8.3, sale of road reserve 36 to 40, Coral Road, Marwala. Being a director of the company interested in purchasing that that land, should that closure go through? So that's been tabled. Thank you. Would someone like to move that, please? Moved by Councillor Whitechurch, seconded by Councillor Law. All in favour? Aye. Against? Carried. So Councillor Sandy will just log off for that section of the meeting and log back on again when uh, it's finished. Thank you. We'll move on to item number six, councillors. A very important item today, which would be remiss of me to leave it out. It's my wife's birthday. Uh, it's a uh, it's a, a fairly um, important birthday, and without her um, support, it'd be very hard for me to do this civic duty. So um, I wish her all the best today. Thank you. Would someone like to move that, please, to be noted? <laughs> Moved by Councillor Law, second by Councillor Kennedy. All in favour? Against carried. Thank you. Now we'll move on to the General Manager's Report, item number seven. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Item 7.1 is the Local Government New South Wales Annual Conference. Again, a situation that could be a moving target with the restrictions and COVID. But the report is before you with the latest as to how the LG New South Wales see how those two events uh, would roll out and they've split them up into an annual conference online Tuesday the 5th of October, which naturally that will be able to go ahead and hoping for a special conference on the 17th of February 2022. Recommendation being to note the report, uh, the Mayor, Deputy Mayor and General Manager attend the annual conference 28th of February to 3rd of March 2022, that the Mayor and the Deputy be Council's nominated voting delegates and a further report for any motions for submission to consider that conference will come forward for the October 21 Council meeting. Thank you. Could I have a move, please? Moved by Councillor Meagle. Moved by Councillor Meagle. Second by Councillor Thomas. Any questions or comments, Councillors? Councillor Thomas. Um, I'd be quite keen to jump online on the 29th of November and also have a couple of motions I'd like to go forward to the to the conference to be considered at the October meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Oh, sorry, can I just get... Uh... Sorry, Robin, what were those dates you were thinking? Uh, I'm happy to jump online on the 29th for that hour. Yep. And also I have a couple of motions I'd like to be considered at the October meeting for next year's state conference. Oh, no worries. Thank you. Would we need to see that in? No, no, we'll follow that up. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so moved by Councillor Meagle and second by Councillor Thomas. All in favour? Aye. Against? Carried. Thank you. Uh, item 7.2, recommending we withdraw this report, so won't need a mover and a seconder, given the uncertainties now with, with that conference, and the idea would be we'd put forward a, an updated report when we do know more, and that's on the LG New South Wales Water Conference, of which Councillor 
uh, Thomas has been uh, selected to attend that, but rather than defer the report, we think we'll be better off withdrawing it. We'll just note that in the minutes. Thanks for that. So that takes us to report 7.3, the December 2021 Ordinary Council meeting, briefing session and councillor workshop, and the deferral of the 2021 council elections from 4th of September <coughs> until the 4th of December. So we've worked through, and especially Rochelle from my office has worked through a lot of different uh, scenarios and, and talking with our directors as well about how that timing will play out. And at this stage, our information uh, leads us to believe the best situation would be to hold a December 2021 ordinary meeting, uh, held that on Thursday the 23rd of December. So originally in the schedule it was 21st. So put that back uh, two days, uh, commencing at 11 a.m. and then the workshop uh, be postponed of course until the 23rd of December as well, commencing 9.30 a.m. and that we cancel the December briefing session. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Wales and seconded by Councillor Law. Any questions or comments, councillors? If not, I'll put it all in favour. Aye. Against? Aye. Carried. So 7.4, Mayor, is the January 2022 ordinary meetings, briefing sessions and workshops recommending that they be cancelled in light of the timing around having to have a meeting within three weeks of an election result being declared for the LGA, for Council. Uh, recommendation would be if we work through that December to get those processes uh, all through and councillors inducted and in, into that meeting process, we wouldn't envisage a, a need for a January uh, meeting as per schedule. And of course, if council does need to have a special or an extraordinary meeting for tenders or anything else, that could still occur, but recommending we cancel the scheduled ones. Thank you, moved by Councillor Whitechurch, seconded by Councillor Kennedy. Any questions or comments? I'll put it all in favour. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Mr. Meagle. Oh, sorry, Councillor Meagle. No. Oh, oh, all in favour? Against? Carried, thank you. Close. Uh, 7.5, Mr. Mayor, is the Federation and Council Merger Implementation Plan and Stronger Communities Progress <coughs> Report. It's quite a bit of detail there. Wouldn't mind having some discussion on that uh, after that's moved and seconded. So the, move, uh, the recommendation is to note the report our progress to the end of June 2021 and point two of the recommendation is seek approval for extension until 30 June 2022 just for the reallocation of those remaining funds which there isn't much left in there but it's quite detailed as to uh, where those where those uh, spare funds still are uh, allocated to projects but not quite finished. Uh, Thank so you. Moved, moved by Council Thomas, seconded by Council Law. Uh, questions? So just lead off and then happy for any questions or comments, but certainly want to acknowledge the work uh, through our finance team, especially Irma, who's done a lot of work on, uh, always continues to work on uh, ensuring these reports are, are prepared and taking into account uh, expenditure and progress of all those projects right across that whole merger implementation journey. So the report is there showing significant amount uh, of work done with the remaining funds of 240000 uh, yet to be spent, but still, still there for, for council. And yeah, just wanted to acknowledge the work right across the council, councillors, uh, previous administration as well, uh, in at allocating out those projects, and then this council continuing forward with delivery, and especially some of the internal projects again uh, coming to fruition, like our rates harmonisation project, our LEP, and plenty of others there that are, that are listed in that report, and a lot of this information will form. Uh, a whole heap of information will form our annual report and end of term report in terms of where the council's uh, been on that spending journey to, to use that funding, I think, really solidly, really wisely and continue to set the council up going forward. So um, any discussion or comment would be uh, welcome. Yeah, uh, I, Councillor Mangle. <coughs> Councillor Mangle. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, just a, a query generally, the real... Uh, realistic time frame for the completion of the outstanding projects given it's been four years now and the Ruston engine in Oakland is still underway. Is there a significant confidence that 
this would be eventually achieved or are we just asking for extensions in perpetuity? Thank you. Certainly, yeah, the Ruston engine one is the, the only remaining community project as such and that uh, we have got a level of confidence now that is moving forward given they've finally found a contractor that's capable of doing uh, and then they have you know worked forward on that project already but the remaining funds um, we're confident now they've found a, a local diesel mechanic that's moved in that is willing to take on the remaining part of that being the, the assembly uh, into town there and, and getting that functional again so uh, and then the rest of the ones internally are very confident uh, as to how we can allocate those and it's, it's a matter of how we you know finally define those couple there's some further work we'll talk with councillors on a couple of those areas where we might be able to uh, spend the money around our 345 committee improvement uh, project uh, a couple of others but no we're very confident council meagle uh, you... council meagle the um and a big problem with that project is uh it's it's massive engine and a, a really really big job to um pull it apart uh, where it's located, take it elsewhere and work through the parts and um, re-manufacture some of those. So I understand why it's taken so long, It's, uh, but it, but hopefully it'll be achieved quicker than, sooner than later. Any further questions, councillors? Um, yeah. I have a question. Councillor Thomas. Um, I think our general manager has possibly answered it, but just with the reallocation of funds, if they were approved by the Office of Local Government, those redistribution is that at the discretion of um, directors or does it come back to chamber for councillors to have that reallocation of funds and where they're going to be distributed can you just give us a bit more commentary around that please yeah so what we're seeking off the office of local government is the extension and for the reallocation as details so we're also seeking and joe um our director of corporate may comment on this if she uh, has a view on that as well to make sure uh, that's the interpretation but the way i understand it is we seek the extension uh, and the reallocation from the olg but, and certainly councillors um, by having that um, on page 17 there of the report having the new availability table as to where we consider uh, those reallocations that would be to get council endorsement as well um, of those projects so we're looking at the continuous improvement support asset management the risk management inter-office comms uh, LEP, fire safety, 355s. So some of those are already existing and some of those are just um, tweaking them around a little bit. But Joe, would you want to make a comment on that one? Uh, yes, happy to. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Butler. Um, thank you, um, Councillor Thomas. So uh, there is a small reallocation that's proposed in the paper, particularly to uh, put some additional funds in the asset management improvements that we need to make. Uh, the risk management framework, particularly the emergency management plans for key buildings of council, uh, and then some of the uh, additional funds to the Section 355 committee project, which we know has been a priority of council. So uh, what we are seeking from you today is uh, support for us to seek approval from the Office of Local Government for both the extension and for this reallocation. So uh, if there was a view that they were not the right projects to um, reallocate those funds to, now is probably the best time to, to have that conversation or to uh, put something in place so that uh, we do come back to council. But, but I'd be recommending that that occur at this point in time. Uh, can, yeah, Councillor Longley. Um, <clears throat> I'd just like to compliment staff <clears throat> on the um, <clears throat> the performance of those projects. I mean, there's a couple of unders and overs, but the margins, given the amount of dollars that have been spent, is, is insignificant. I, I reckon we ought to congratulate them for the performance and how they've balanced those uh, figures, mate. Yeah, th thanks, Councillor Long Longley, and absolutely, um, I'd. Uh, well, on the words of from the general manager, the, the finance staff have been doing a fantastic job, and yeah, and as you say, to come in close on budget like that with so many pro projects is fantastic. But I'm just not only, the, not only the finance pad, it's the engineering staff that would have delivered oh, those projects. Absolutely, but I'm just just I'm looking at the financial report. I'll talk about. I'll give the credit to them today, but yeah, the engineering staff definitely out in the field and and all the work they do. There's no doubt about that. Um, I'm wondering, Council Thomas, with um, with what our Director of Finance has said, are you seeking that maybe a uh, points around that recommendation um, 
to for council endorsement, or what would you say that you have time to more time to look through um, some of those suggestions there? My interpretation was that it wasn't so um, so final in the allocation that the decision had to be made today. I'm not saying I'm not sitting comfortable with what's on our um, business papers. Uh, I think it's just probably the big highlight for me would be to, to really certainly wrap up that Section 355 committee um, progress. It's been a very long, drawn-out progress. And as yep. delegates, and I'm sure my fellow councils would feel the same, as delegates for Section 355, every time we go or have engagement with the Section 355 committee, it's very rarely where it hasn't been brought up. You know, it's probably early 2019 when we started that process and here we are in 2021. So, yeah, no, I sit comfortable, really happy to gain other feedback. As I said, it was just nice to get that clarity because I didn't realise that the decision had to be made today. Thank you. Thank you, Council Thomas. Would anyone else have a comment on that? Uh, Director Shannon. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. Sorry, just to respond to one um, comment that you made, Councillor Thomas. Uh, Allocating those additional funds to the Section 355 committee will not complete the implementation of that project. So I think we need to be clear um, that, that that is a significant project uh, that will take uh, a length of time to deliver and it will need a number of different council resources uh, to be able to, to do that. Uh, this will provide a level of training for uh, Section 355 committee members. So um, that's what the intent of this is. So. I think that it's important that I clarify that. Thank you. Just through through um, through our mayor to mm. Director Shannon. I know we're digressing off topic a little bit, but is there any time frames or how we're looking for our Section Three Five Fives when you're saying um, that it, this is not going to finalise the process? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Thomas. Um, would you like to reply or take that on notice, here, uh, Director Shannon? I'd prefer to take that on notice and provide a further report to council, if I may. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think what we've talked about, certainly as staff, and I get that some of the committees are at different levels of advancement than others in terms of terms of reference and the way they manage things. There's been a number of audits across all the committees. But to support Joe's comments, our director of corporate there, that's a huge individual process in some extent because every committee is working through at different levels and have different ideas about whether they should or shouldn't be going forward and then other committees, irrespective of we even merged or not, have got differing views about whether they should get more funding or shouldn't and levels of service. So it's a really big, uh, in some ways, ongoing piece of work to continue to chip away at it. I agree with Joe uh, there as well. We can't, uh, we'd love to just send out all the things that have been sent before and get them to sign off on their new term of reference and away they go again. But when you bring in a risk and a whole heap of other areas uh, and all the good work they do do, it's, it's going to be a, an ongoing piece of work for a, little, a fair while yet, I would have thought. Um, so, yeah, just I think a project plan and outlining how we work forward uh, that Joe could bring forward uh, would certainly be welcome for us all to understand just what is involved. Can I just make one further comment, please, in regards to our Section 355? Would there be possibility to have maybe a one-page guideline just to give update to our Section 355s on where Council are up to in the progression of this, um, of their, um, you know, their terms of reference, etc, etc. Just say something that we've got something to talk to them about when we go to their meetings. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah it sounds good, uh, Council Thomas, I'm sure. We'll consider that as part of when we wrap up the report as to how we communicate out. Okay. Yeah. Can, I just, can I just jump in there too? Yes, yes. Because I'm a chairman of a 355 committee and we have written that many times to council. Uh, we've lost our secretary over it, no response. And we don't know whether Arthur or Martha, what the rules are. We're getting told that we've got to be, council has got to be in attendance to every 355 committee. And then if we can't make it, we've got to find our own replacement. It's just that you can't find replacements that are going out in the bush. We need to have more direction. We, and as Bron Bronnie said, a simple page, one page document. We have no idea what we're doing. And it's all about communication. And in a way I said, it's a lack of communication. Yes, and, and um, Councillor Longley, um, yeah, thanks for those those words. Uh, I would suggest that the three, that I could be wrong here, but suggest that the three, five, five committees that are functioning now within our council area continue to do so until any new 
let's call legislation changes actually appear on the desk. Um, I I would say business as usual, um, and that way, you know, what's going on now doesn't um, interfere with those those communities because they are that that important for a lot of our assets, and they they need to be they need to keep going. Um, and I'm sure that if there's anything drastically wrong, council uh, can then act on it. But we need to be, I, I think, just keep going, doing the job, and then we'll bring in the legislation as it comes along. Would that be fair to say? Well, that's what I'd, I'd consider. I mean, the mergers cause a lot of disruption and different contacts, different councillors, <coughs> different staff attending and different committees, but the committees themselves have never been deleted. Mm. And it's up to those committees as well if they've been having a, an executive and having minutes and having reports and um, numerous times we've sent out who our contacts are, then they've come forward again and said, who is our councillor delegate? I know Rochelle um, has done a lot of work on that too. So I agree um, from Councillor Longley's point of view with your committee hat on that it's a communication issue, but we've also done a lot and sent out a lot of things to try and continue to uh, work forward and say, this is your councillor delegate. And of course, if if uh, a councillor is not available uh, to attend, um, you know, that is a concern, but it's also a concern if our staff members can't attend and try and feed the information back from those committees. So we just yeah, continue yeah. to work forward. I'm sure you, uh, no one will be breaking any laws. Um, we'll work through it all. Uh, any further comments or questions, or, or is that happy with that recommendation? Uh, yeah, Councillor Watcher. Yeah. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Just on uh, the disbursement of the remaining funds, obviously I think um, Director Shannon just mentioned that now's the time to mention I did go to a Lions Club handover dinner uh, about six or eight weeks ago and off the record they mentioned that the Lions Park in South Corowa, there was some funds taken away for various reasons to finish that toilet amenities block. They've still got $40,000 allocated for that Lions Park in River Street um, and I think council was to match it or up to 20000 or something just to finish the block. Just wondering if, if we can consider maybe talking to the respective people at the Lions Club if there are funds for that level for that project because that money's still sitting there at the Lions Club to finish the park. Yeah, we'd certainly welcome them if they want to approach council. Uh, I'd suggest that would be a good way to, to do that if they want to write into us and uh, refresh that project. I wouldn't think with the, the stuff we've been discussing here, the new council implementation fund, so those internal type projects is sort of where we're at. We, I don't think we'd be in the ability to try and uh, get some SCF reallocations. The government very strict on how we transfer across those couple of different funds. Uh, so it could be another source of funding we'd be looking for if we wanted to um, support that one going forward. Uh, but yeah, certainly welcome them corresponding back to us if they haven't already and we can follow that up. But we'll make a note anyway. <coughs> Uh, Councillor Watcher. Thank you. Um, Director Shannon, I guess that um, with uh, the application to um, change the direction or, or to utilise the um, the new available funds, you, you need projects to do that in that application. Would that be fair to say? Um, you have to Mr Mayor, so this, this is... This is a reallocation of funds for existing projects. So there's, there's no new projects here and we're, and we're not able to add new projects to uh, the list to Office of Local Government. This, this is just uh, fine-tuning the cost of a number, a couple, sorry, fine-tuning the cost of three projects uh, that have been priority areas of council. Uh, so it's not new applications are going in for this. Um, it's, it's purely movement between projects. Thank you, and that was probably the point I wanted to get to, um, is we're just trying to tidy up some of the work we're currently doing. It, it's a financial benefit for those projects, yeah. Okay, any further questions on that, councils or comments? I'll put it all in favour. Right. Against. Aye. Carried. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, uh, Mr. General Manager. Now I move on to item number eight, uh, Corporate and Community Services Report. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, councillors. Uh, this first report is an update on council's financial performance for July 2021. So the first 
year of the first sorry the first month of the financial year uh, key highlights in that are the that there is 10.4 million dollars cash in the general fund uh, so that's where we expect to be at this early stage of the financial year and that it also includes the advance payment of financial assistance grants of 3.6 million dollars that was paid uh, late last financial year uh, council has 31 million in investments which have been invested in accordance with council's investment policy and debtors are sitting at $15.7 million. So that's an increase on the last month as a result of council general rates being levied on um, all accessible properties across the council area. So the report is recommended to you for noting. So noted, Thank you. Council Meagle. Thank you, moved by Council Meagle, seconded by Council Law. Any questions or comments, councillors? I'll put it. All in favour? Aye. Against, carried. <laughs> Agenda item 8.2 is the uh, summary of progress against the delivery program for the six months ending 30th of June 2021. As detailed in the report, there's been some important achievements in over the six month period, including uh, the completion <coughs> and opening of the Coral Aquatic Centre. There's been a, quite a number of sales of industrial land in both Coral and Mawela, with how long lots becoming available in coming months strong sales at the Corowa sale yards, the rollout of the north of the Murray branding and tourism marketing strategy, uh, delivery of our festival of fun for seniors in April with over 500 seniors attending one of four events across the council area. Uh, and there's been continued support of the Federation Youth Council, which has enabled it to deliver a Youth Fest 2021 with, the, with a number of events also across the council area. Uh, I think it's important to note yes. there's also been considerable engagement with the New South Wales Cross-Border Commissioner and the Victorian Cross-Border Commissioner that have been focused on the impact of COVID-19, associated restrictions and opportunities to support the community in recovery. So this rec report is recommended to you for noting. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Kennedy and seconded by Councillor Law. Any questions or comments? Councillor Thomas, was that... Yeah, I have some comments. Thank you. Uh, I'd just like to highlight and very much thank the staff for um, bringing together some of these most wonderful events, especially the um, Festival of Fun for Seniors. As you would be aware, I wasn't at the July meeting, but I'd like to think it was mentioned, but we can mention it now. How spectacular to actually have the Festival of Fun mentioned in New South Wales State Parliament by our own local member, Mr. Justin Clancy, and to be recorded in a hands out report. I mean, how excellent is that? Congratulations to all involved, and in particular, the Ageing World Committee and the two staff members and our own councillor, Gail Law, because just well done to you all. The other point of call that I'd just like to bring to your attention was the volunteer uh, celebration with that beautiful luncheon that was held here in Mawela. Mm -hmm. And to have the Chief Inspector, Robert Fitzgerald, and his beautiful wife, Kate, visit was an absolute pleasure. Um, Councillor Wales and myself were hosts for the day. And this is slight digression, but if I can bring it to the table now, it would be absolutely brilliant, is that I really am feeling for Mr Fitzgerald's community at the moment. He is actually from the Blacktown community. Uh, as you would be aware, on the outskirts of Sydney. Imagine being in that community at the moment and what they're dealing with. As a high-profile man within his community, he would be supporting them in any way possible. And I was kind of hoping in, you know, because we have got such great connection now with him and he's such an open and honest person, is that would Federation Council consider offering a pay-it-forward contribution to his community after we get through this horrific period that we're going through with the COVID lockdowns. Just something for us to consider. Thank you. Sorry, Councillor Thomas. The, um, the last part wasn't, I didn't quite get that. Would, would Federation Council consider? I'm really happy to revisit what I just mentioned. That Federation Council write to Mr Fitz, Fitzgerald offering a pay it forward contribution to his community. Offering a pay it forward. An example that I would like to give would that possibly we could create a, a city country um, connection, especially in terms of maybe um, getting some of their beautiful community to come and visit our region.
through Mr Fitzgerald where there's opportunity for that. Thank you, Council Thomas. Um, Council Thomas, maybe you might like to put a future notice of motion. No, I'm really happy to. I just really wanted to highlight, um, you know, how extraordinary it was meeting his family and having his contribution to our community. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And, and uh, I'd, I'd really like to encourage that. I think it's a great idea. And um, we could work up a notice of motion to, with some plan for the future with Blacktown, have a good relationship with some of the councillors there. Okay, any further comments, councillors? Yeah, yes, Mr Mayor. Council Longley. Yeah, a couple of things that concern me, we've nearly sold out of commercial um, uh, uh, industrial land in uh, Mawala. We're out of industrial land in, in Corowa. We probably need, well, we don't probably need, we need to really start thinking seriously about how we're going to increase the availability of land in both those communities. I mean, if we look at, at our economic statement um, and we're looking at growth, without those, um, uh, without being able to offer uh, industrial land in both those communities, it's going to inhibit the growth of our council. Thank you, Councillor Longley. Well, Thanks, uh, Councillor Longley. And I, before I comment on that part of it, I just wanted to acknowledge the work of councillors and staff in uh, getting to this position where we've got to with our performance across uh, the operational plan, but also being uh, towards the end of our delivery program as well uh, for this term, as much as that term's been extended, obviously, for Council. But enormous amount of work uh, achieved and going forward and I think it's, this narrative needs to go out to the community as much as anything, given we're towards the end of our of the current council's term. But the, the discussion around what Councillor Thomas mentioned with the seniors festivals, and, and there's obviously a lot of other areas through here that we've highlighted just in a real quick snapshot. But I hope uh, councillors, if they haven't fully read uh, all those uh, comments at the end of each action, we've put a lot of work into making sure we really you know, in a succinct way as possible, capture where the progress is against all those actions, 232 or so of them, to understand uh, the projects are okay, they're a one-off thing where we're going to deliver this or that. So, yeah, you know, some of those are multi-year projects, but where we close them out, that's quite okay and, and quite, uh, I suppose, transparent to see. But some of that strategy work uh, taken to Councillor Longley's comment are really important as to how they all interrelate to each other. And I myself did a lot of work, even recently, uh, working through where the staff had commented on all those things so that we're all clear on where that's all got to because as we go forward in um, the early part of next year, challenged as it is with a shorter time frame to prepare a new or an updated community strategic plan for 10 years plus, a new delivery program and then our operational plan is to understand where all those, not only our day-to-day -day services are, but all where our strategy works up to and how that interrelates. So take Councillor Longley's point, uh, but it remind, I guess, councillors that we are on that process. We've got a uh, consultant engaged, uh, Alan Grimwood, who's doing our growth strategy through Susan, our director of planning area. Um, so Alan's had his first inception meeting the other day with key staff, especially engineering around water, sewer uh, and Steve's area. So that would be uh, looking towards a councillor workshop to brief councillors at this early stage on where we see our growth uh, strategy going forward and that'll do the three big towns, our three river towns, but it'll also look at a lot of opportunities around our smaller towns, villages for smaller lot living. Uh, but as you know, Councillor Longley, as well as anybody, uh, it is an important thing we need to consider our utility servicing plans uh, as in parallel with that. So a lot of the actions you'll see, especially in the water and sewer area of our actions uh, on our operational plan really highlight where those where that works up to. And we're not at the start of that. We're, we're working through a lot of detail in terms of uh, lot demand servicing and how we work forward. And the, none more so than the two big subdivisions, uh, Kaura and Marwala, that will be scheduled. One's going to court in September and the other one's uh, looking at a planning panel decision around that time as well or, or a little bit later. You know, they, they'll be key residential drivers, but I get the, the question on the industrial land. Uh, so that's... That's a situation where we're well aware of, but we're not going to be able to roll out lots within 12 months either. We're going to have to work through that properly, but it is moving forward. So. Thank you, Mr. Butler. Uh, Councillor Wales, did you have a question? 
Yeah, I was wondering if I was there. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I'd just like to fully support the comments made by Councillor Thomas in relation to the Volunteers Week. It certainly was a great day and they're great people. And um, I did mention the July meeting, but and I also further support that any um, thing, any ideas that Councillor Thomas has in relation to a notice of motion forthcoming in relation to that Blacktown area. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Wales. It was amazing, um, Councillor Thomas, the attendance numbers are oh, huge. Uh, uh, even at the dinner at Miranda, it was, um, it was a full house. It was fantastic. No, the most excellent, um, excellent initiative by council and the um, the seniors week is so well attended and just, and how vibrant, vibrant they those that wonderful generational aspect is. Thank you. Can you just like, may I make one more further comment, Mr. Mayor? Yes, Council Wells. I'd just like to say it, and it's a very important for the community for this volunteers to appear. Thank you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And you can see that often there's a lot of people there that you don't see you know, in your day-to-day -day living. It's good to get them all out and together and mixing, for exactly. sure. Thank you. Um, any further comments here, councils? If not, I'll put it. All in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? Carried. 8.3. Uh, Thank you, Director Shannon. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, and I note that Councillor Kennedy has just left the meeting um, due to their declaration of interest. Uh, so the, the purpose of this report is to seek council support for a partial road closure uh, and the sale of land in the Barn Street Rover Reserve, which is at the rear of 36 to 40 Corowa Road, Mawela. Uh, an application has been received from the adjoining property owner and has been progressed in, cordon, in accordance with the Roads Act and Council's policy in relation to public road permanent closures. So uh, the recommendation uh, before you is to support the closure and sale of approximately 600 square metres of land in Barn Street, Mawala, uh, so that it can be joined onto 36 to 40 Corolla Road. Uh, so the valuation there is based on the uh, what has been provided by the Valuer General. Uh, and uh, we're seeking your uh, support for the property officer to proceed with the process in accordance with, with Council's policy and the Roads Act requirements. Thank you, uh, Director Shannon. Any, um, can I first of all get a mover and a second, please? Moved by Councillor Longmire, seconded by Councillor Wales. Uh, question, Councillor Whitechurch, was that hand up or no? I'd like a question, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councillor Longmire. Yeah, in regard, can I ask Director Shannon, in regard to the, um, the VG valuation, is that a requirement to be only done via that process? Uh, the um, thank you, Councillor Longmire. The the policy provides for it to be the Valuer General's valuation is used for that purpose. So uh, that's what's been used in this instance. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any further comments, here, councillors? If not, I'll put it. All in favour. Aye. Right. Against. Aye. Right. Against? Was there any against there, councillors? I'm sorry. If not, carried. Thank you. We we'll just get. Uh, there was a bit of a delay in the um, answers there. I'm sorry. Message, councillor Kennedy. Oh, message. Would someone like to um, message councillor Kennedy and tell him he can come back in? He's back. He's yeah. back. He's joined. Yeah. Joined. Thank you. Director Shannon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the next item, 8.4, uh, relates to the Corowa, Corowa Tourism Advisory Section 355 Committee. So at the July 2021 20, Council meeting, Council supported the establishment of a new Tourism Advisory Committee for Corowa. Uh, the first meeting is due to be held in early September and this report seeks the nomination of a councillor to be a council representative to be part of that committee. So uh, we are seeking um, a, a nomination to be on the committee as well as an alternate in the event that the original councillor is unable to attend. Thank you. Uh, can I have a mover there please? Moved by Councillor Wales, second by Councillor Whitechurch. Um, Councils, I'm, I'm not sure uh, who 
um, like put their hand up there, but I'd certainly put my hand up um, if um, that was suitable or someone else, like just to start the ball rolling. But um, I'm, I'm happy to be the alternate. Yep. Um, was there any other interest? Only reason I've done that is because um, I've been involved with this committee since they, day one and, and uh, I'd like to be able to help out where, if I could to see it go forward or try and help it go forward. So would there be anyone else? I don't want to push anyone out, that's for sure. Okay, if not. So we'll just get that wording for Rochelle. Yep. Uh, that's right, yep, Burke and then Law. Good. Okay, so um, we, do you need uh, some wording for that? No, it's all done. All done, okay. Did I, did I put that? Yeah, you got Wales White Church. So yeah. Oh, sorry, I haven't put it back. All in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? Carry. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> Councillor Wales. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Joe, for that report. Uh, Thanks, we'll now Mr. move on to the Director of Development and Environmental mm -hmm. Services report. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, Councillors, before you is item 9.1, the building approvals for complying and construction certificates. Uh, as you can see from the uh, work undertaken, we seem to have gone back to what was uh, standard for this time of year. Happy to take any questions. Thank you. I'll get a, um, a mover for that one, please. Moved by Councillor Law, seconded by Councillor Meagle. Any questions or comments here, Councillors? Councillor yes, Meagle. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, just a quick comment. Do you feel that uh, to the director, do you feel that uh, that return has been affected because there is no more industrial land available in Kairawa or, or and um, how long, or oh, sorry, my while for that matter, or is it just the COVID impact again? Uh, I think it's neither of those. I think it's because the planning portals come into place. We're having some issues with the planning portal. <laughs> Um, as a majority of councils in New South Wales, so uh, we're about, we're working with the department to resolve those issues and and speed up the process again for people wanting to develop. Thank you very much. Okay, any further questions or comments, there, councillors? If not, I'll put it. All in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? Aye. Carried. Item 9.2 is the development applications approved under delegation for the month of July. Again, happy to take any questions. So moved. Moved by Councillor Meagle, seconded by Councillor Wales. Any questions or comments here, councillors? Looks like there would be no questions, so I'll put it all in favour. Aye. Against? Carried. Item 9.3 is the regional and state significant development applications that have been lodged with council or lodged uh, with the state. Uh, the only change is to the subdivision in Mulwala. We did have a meeting on the 23rd of July with the panel and the applicant. As a result of that, we have the additional information has been received uh, but returned uh, due to some errors within the information and the council should be receiving a request for a planning agreement by the end of August as directed by the chair. Again, happy to take any questions. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Whitechurch, uh, seconded by Councillor Law. Any questions or comments here, Councillors? Councillor Whitechurch. Yeah, Mr Mayor, just, um, it's great to see that these subdivisions are in my way on that. They've been going for a long time and we're, we're missing out largely in, in residential purchases. There's just not the land around anywhere in the, the Murray River towns, especially in the Shire. So it's great to see that something's going to be opened up and um, get some building activity going um, because regional areas, we know it's going to boom and I think we've got to be pushing forward as hard as we can to get these things going. So well done if we're getting somewhere with that one. Mm. Thank you. Oh, that Councillor Kennedy's got his hand up. Councillor Kennedy. Oh, just one comment. I'd like to um, back... Exactly what Sean said. It's great to see these things finally progressing. You know, it's 
across the borders we're getting killed by other shires. Just um, but it's great to see this is finally taken ahead, and, and all all these JRPPs. You know, it's it's good to see that things are finally getting off the ground, and looks like we might be getting some some, some stuff done in in, uh, in our towns. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments, councillors? Mr. Mayor, I think one of the big handbrakes we've got is our water and sewer supply. Yeah, uh, thank you, Council Longley. Did you want to add to that, or? No, I'm just commenting that you know we we are struggling in all the river communities to provide uh, adequate water and sewer. Some more in uh, some more or less in some cases. So if some of these big uh, subdivisions get going. Um, we're already at capacity. Um, with that, that's potentially going to limit um, the ability for council to provide the um, services of these subdivisions. Yes. Um, Do you have comment on that? Susan, yeah, comment. thank you, Susan. That'd okay. be good. So in the report, you'll see that um, one of the directions is to ask for a, pl a planning agreement to be put in place. Now, the main reason that is happening is to address those water and sewer concerns. So essentially what's happening is we're negotiating with the developer what's going to be required to service that development and what the impact's going to be on the rest of the infrastructure for the community. Uh, that matter will actually come back to council. Uh, it will have an impact on our long-term financial plan and our delivery program. Um, so we're just waiting for that request from the developer to come in uh, and then there will be a separate report to council. Thank you, Susan. Uh, I'll ask the general manager to make comment. Yeah, just quickly, Susan's covered that really well. And just broadly on a principal basis, what we're recommending, what we will be recommending to council in the VPA voluntary planning agreement, working with the developers, is that they, uh, you know, that we don't want a situation where developers install fit for purpose infrastructure just for that estate. But we also we're not going to uh, force or even recommend costs for the whole next 20 years of council uh, into that development. But we want to achieve something where they pay their share for the infrastructure if it does traverse through and allow extension out to further uh, areas where you know we're right in that mindset that we want to have infrastructure that does uh, enable future growth and development. So we don't have a whole series of different networks that have been put in just to favour certain or to service certain areas. So. That's, I guess, the crux of where the staff are negotiating with developers uh, in terms of that arrangement and that share of cost, uh, to, but to build future-proof uh, mains and pump stations and the like that will service future growth areas. That's about that cost-share arrangement so that um, you know they pay their share and then the future is also catered for uh, by council going forward. But as Susan said, there'll be infrastructure impacts on our water and sewer and then how we recoup those for future developments. So there'll be a number of things coming forward. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Longley, for raising it. But you are correct. Um, we've got a backlog there, but um, you, as you can see from the information we've just been given, um, it's been, um, uh, I suppose, it's been put into future planning so that, um, you know, we can deal with the backlog pr progressively and, and um, anything new is going to, um, yeah, work with us. So thank you very much for that. Any further comments there, councillors? If not, I'll put it all in favour. Against? Aye. Carrie. Item 9.4 is the Heritage Program for 2021 to 2023. Uh, before you, councillors, is a list of priorities for Heritage and they link back to our uh, local strategic planning statement and the heritage works that were outlined in that document. Uh, happy to take any questions. Um, I guess the main change from past operations is we will be opening a local heritage fund, which will be via a grant process rather than the heritage advisor determining what work should be undertaken. Okay, uh, would someone like to move that please? Moved by Councillor Thomas, okay. seconded by mm -hmm. Councillor Wales. Uh, Councillor Thomas, you have a question? With question. Uh, I noticed, uh, Director Abiyad, that we have a liaison with other community heritage bodies. Have they already been identified? Not all of them, no. So we've just got the heritage groups that we're aware of in the towns. 
mm-hmm. um, and they will be notified that this is happening. Yeah, I'm really fully supportive of this uh, this process and the funds coming forward. I would like to think that this particular area, our heritage for Federation, could be actually become more stronger as we uh, move forward because if we can have the capacity to, to build on this, I think there would be probably possibly more funds available to deliver in this space. Would you have the same feeling? Absolutely, yeah. Mm-hmm. So the, the priority will be to set up uh, the local heritage fund gives people a better understanding of what heritage is and what they can and can't do with their buildings. It also opens them up to the ideas of other documents and other funding that's available and how we go through the process of getting that the heritage advisor role for the next two years will be helping people get their um, facilities through that process rather than doing works on buildings um, that may or may not need those works done. And with the engagement of the heritage advisor, is that uh, someone we already have on our books or is that an expression of interest that goes out again? We're calling for expressions of interest. To be engaged, no worries. Okay, thank you. Question, Mr. Mayor. Council Neagle. Thank you. Uh, to the director, is, I noticed that it's for Main Street heritage items. That's Main Streets across the LGA, not just the major towns, it, it, including the villages. Is that correct? Across the LGA, yeah. Typically, I've established two of these over my career, and the first year we get really poor response to grants. Usually, we have to go and tap people on the shoulder. Um, but after that, it becomes very strong. So we, we thought if we targeted main streets where they're highly visible commercial properties, then we're more likely to improve the understanding in the community of heritage values. Thank you. Any further questions there, councillors? Um, I just had one on that um, uh, that recommendation and along with uh, Council Meagles uh, that point number two that the um, local heritage fund grants priority for 21-23 for for being for Main Street heritage items I understand the word priority that is there um, does that lim- does it do you think it limits the um, opportunity for other areas as well or do you think that's no it doesn't limit them it just means if we do get a lot of applications in, we prioritise yep. those that are in, in the Main Street areas. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right, any further questions, councillors? Mr Mayor, if I may? Yes, Councillor Longway. Yeah, yeah, I know it's a diverse question, but in regard to the opportunity of Heritage at Bory Creek, the Lockhart Council are very keen to introduce what's called the Tim Fisher Way, which would go through, patronise that area uh, and culminating in, in certainly in Bory Creek. Is, is that something that we should, I know it's a different thing and not on the agenda, but is that something that we should look at to support going forward? It's something uh, we can potentially look at, yes. Uh, yeah, no, it counts a long way and I was thinking about that particular item, um, raising that in the workshop, I've had a number of calls myself in relation to that, uh, Tim Fisherway. Um, so yeah, I'll probably leave that conversation for the workshop, but uh, it went through Lockhart Shire Council last night, I believe. Yeah, I just noticed, I thought I read Council Longmire as well, that they'd had that been knocked back or something from the names board or the road, and I was unsure whether it even, because I thought they would have sought out support to try and add weight to it, so I think it's something we, if we can try and help with. But I hadn't seen any come before Council before in terms of supporting that. And it wasn't going to be an official road name, it was just trying to make a touring name for that road. Yes, that's right. It, it, the road will uh, maintain the same name. Yep. It's just, a, I think they want to put the sign up at the museum at Lockhart and also in Bory Creek and I'd head out San Diego Road past Tim Fisher's farm. Yeah. Thank you, Council Longmore. Any further questions, Councillors? So I'll put it all in favour. Aye. Against. Carry. Thank you. Item 9.5 is the How Long Coram or Whaler Floodplain Risk Management Committee committee members. Um, as you'll see in the report, we have nominations for John Skinner for How Long. 
Yeah, he has a technical background um, and will be a great asset for this project. Yes, he will. Uh, Jeff Lewis, uh, who is a former council, council engineer uh, and long-time resident of Corowa and has a good understanding of flood events within Corowa. And Ross McHenry, um, who is a resident in Mawaila and has uh, a good understanding of what happens with flooding there. Um, happy to take any questions regarding that. Uh, just to also note, councillors, that the contract for that for the study has been let to WMA Water. That was done under delegation by the general manager, uh, and the works will be commencing in September or October. Thank you. Would someone like to move that recommendation, please? Moved by Councillor Kennedy, seconded by Councillor Thomas. Any questions or comments here, councillors? Councillor Thomas. Uh, comment. Um, look, I'm really extra pleased that this committee is progressing forward. Um, I've received a lot of commentary from the Mawela community, especially with these, um, this lovely lot of beautiful rain, winter rain that we've actually received, which is can't estimate how valuable that's been, uh, especially with maybe possibly the amount of water lying around in people's yards, you know, drain issues, that kind of thing. So, you know, progressing forward in this space can't come soon enough, you know, especially once we start getting those strategies developed on how to deal with the, um, the, the our low-lying areas and our floodplain that we live on. So, well done. Thank you. Thank you. And um, just because it's in the same context, I'm just wondering um, the never-ending story of the um, flood study down here is it, it must be getting close to completion I'm hoping so yeah. <laughs> um, we are pushing the the contractor on that one we've had a number of the documents delivered but not all of them so all right thank you okay if there's no further questions I'll put it all in favor all right all right against Carrie uh, item 9.6 is the update to the developer levy plan for Schedule 1. This outlines the works that have been undertaken in the last 12 months and outlines the priorities for the following 12 months. Happy to take any comment or questions. I'll get a move. Uh, moved by Councillor Wales and seconded by Councillor Thomas. Any questions, councillors? There's lots of projects there. Uh, I have so, a question. <laughs> Councillor Thomas. Uh, just in the upcoming priorities and how you set those priorities, I would have thought shade, shade sale installation at various parks, um, two questions. I actually thought that would have been a high priority. And so if you could just give you some clarity on how you prioritise them. And also one sale per annum at the cost of $45,000 how are we going to work out where that one sale goes per year? Thank you. Okay, so the priorities are set via the um, links to the long-term financial plan and our capital works program. Uh, in addition to that, all the managers were asked what their priorities are for the next 12 months. Now, with developer contributions, we have a limited income coming in. So we're saying that potentially only one shade sale will be funded utilising funds from the developer contributions plan. Um, our Parks and Recreation Manager has identified the priority places for those shade sales. I hope that makes sense. No, that's fine. Um, so then if we have opportunity to deliver more shade sales across our council area, um, are we privy to that list, that the priority list for where those shade sales are to go? And we'll have to ask um, Director Carmichael to answer that one. <laughs> um, yeah, Darren has a list of where Darren Harvey, our um, manager of recreation, has a list of where the one we did this year was up at Borey Creek. Um, we're actually trying to go away from uh, sales so much as fabric and get back to more sustainable covers over our playground equipment. The one we did up there is a gazebo type structure after consultation with the local community, um, simply because of the bird damage we get um, 
gorillas and cockatoos and everything else seem to love shade sales as much as kids like love to play underneath them. So, um, yeah, but yeah, we're open to uh, suggestions and what have you going forward. Quite happy to take that on board. Thank you. Council uh, Whitechurch. Yeah, Mr Mayor, just uh, looking at the dump point for my whaler, is that going in a caravan park or a football ground or where's that? what's that for? That's for the ship to shore dump point for the boats and oh, it's okay. going so, in. A... So Lake Moor Whaler's not allowed to have any overnight houseboats on it by law. So how many boats is that carrying for? I just wonder. That's carrying catering for your two um, paddle boats that are on there that oh, have... So just the two, that's... that's okay. <laughs> But it will also be able to be used by the community as well, so caravanners as well. Uh, just to clarify, that's great. Um, so those, can I, um, to the director, those dump points, I just noted a note at ALGA conference this year, we had a conversation with, um, oh, were they the happy wanderers? But they were giving, giving us um, dump points, a grant. And we we talked them into maybe two dump um, dump points. Is this the same type of thing where you can pull up in a caravan car or whatever and and dump along the, in, in one of these facilities? Yeah, very similar. Uh, this one will have restricted access because the priority will be to take the boats, given the um, water quality issues that have to be maintained for Lake Mowala. Um But there will be potential for caravans to pull up yeah good correctly at this stage we're just trying we have got a grant um i think it's through maritime to undertake these works and the reason this is high priority is that our contribution is actually coming out of the developer charges okay okay and it, it also susan resolves an issue down there that was pretty well just where they ran across and tried to get it all into a public toilet, didn't it? Yes, yeah. So this is reducing the potential of, of pollution to waters, which will see the operators and council in trouble if we don't resolve it. Yeah. Just a comment, Mr Mayor, please. Yes, Council Meagle. Thank you. Just having spent some time away and um, the amount of caravanners that we encountered on our journey uh, beggared belief. The Queensland was absolutely full of caravanners once restrictions um, ease in the southern states I'm sure they'll be down here again and I think whilst the boats might be the priority I think the big users will be the grey nomads um, because there's a lot of them out there. Thank you. Yeah, yeah that's right and um, <clears throat> a good point um, Councillor Meagle and maybe also a map of the dump points where they currently are and where they exist in our show would be handy as well. Very worthwhile. Yeah. Mr Mayor, yeah. we, there is one at Low Square in uh, How Long, it's been there for years. It would attract at any time when, when all the bands are moving, they have to line up in Hawkins Street to get in there sometimes. So that's how popular they are. And this year it's been huge because of the numbers that are on the road. Uh, and great advantage to that. They end up pulling up there, they walk up the street, they spend some money in the town, at the bakery, uh, wherever it may be. Um, so, and it's marked on there, um, they have a, um, a, a, a um, uh, Paul would know, a touring um, map of all these points. And so it's added, added uh, to, to the economy of how long. It's been a great asset to us. Excellent, excellent. Um, so, Director, maybe Sean and I should pass on the information that um, where they intended to give us a couple of dump points that it might be handy around the shire somewhere. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll just uh, look at another item there. Can, oh, sorry, can you hear me or not? <laughs> the um, Coral and my whaler trail is getting pretty exciting. There's about 10 k's completed. Um, yeah, so. How, how many kilometres is that long also in total? 42. 42. Yeah. It's a marathon. That's the only reason I remember that. Yeah, yeah. 30, 32 to go. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, any any other comments, councillors, on any of those um, projects? If not, I'll, I'll put it. All in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? 
Carrie. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you, thank you, Susan. Uh, now we'll move on to item number. Uh, did you want to move on to ten, or do you want a quick coffee before we do so? What What would you like to do, councillors? Bit of direction, please. Bit of coffee for me, thank you. Would like to have a coffee? I'm pretty break? satisfied with what I've got. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was I a coffee, thank you. Yeah, that was you. Thank you. Sure. I understand. I'm sorry. We're Keep going. Keep going. All right. Yep. Well, okay. We'll, we'll, Stephen, I, I guess it's not a long report, so we'll, we'll move. Up. We'll continue. Is that okay? We'll continue yep. on. Okay. All right. Okay. Director of Engineering Services. Over to you, Steve. Didn't. Don't think you heard you. <laughs> Steve, you've got no sound there. You're on okay. mute. I just no. tried to see if everybody picked that up. Um, <laughs> Good one, Steve. <laughs> I was already for a break. I'm not, I'm not used to the first half. I'm just saying, Mr. Mayor, I'll remain seated because I have got corporate gear on, but only from the waist up, so I won't stand up. So. <laughs> just uh, 